Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these very elegant and pretty pearl and wire wrapped dangle earrings. And this design is very special to me because I actually wore them on my wedding day. But of course, they don't have to just be for bridal jewelry. It's a very elegant style for any occasion. And of course, you also don't have to use pearls for these. Um, you can use any kind of beads you like. For example, here's a pair I made with Swarovski crystals instead of pearls. As always, go ahead and check out the description section below this video if you want to know exactly what uh, brands of tools I'm using and where you can get them. And I'll also have a full list of materials and where you can purchase those down there as well. You may need to click the See More button if you're on a computer, or there's a little gray uh, triangle arrow thing if you're on a smartphone that you'll need to click to see uh, that description section. You will be needing a couple different kinds of wire to make this. I'm going to be using all sterling silver wire from RioGrande.com. Um, I'm going to be using 20 gauge, 22 gauge, and also some 26 gauge, again all in round dead soft. As far as findings goes, I'm going to be using these little sterling jump rings from Rio Grande. They are 2.4 millimeters inner diameter made from 22 gauge wire. That's the item number right there. And I'll also be using some head pins, and that's their item number right there. And of course, you don't need to buy these. You can make these yourself um, out of the wire that we're already going to be using. But just for time purposes, I'm going to be using these. And of course, for earrings, you'll want some ear wires. I'm going to be using these lever backs, again, from Rio Grande. But you can use whatever kind you like, whatever you prefer. Lastly, you're going to need some pearls or beads. I'm going to be using Swarovski crystal pearls that I purchased at Fire Mountain Gems. I'll be using 6mm round, 4mm round, and 3mm round. So you can take a look at those. I got these again at Fire Mountain Gems. And you'll also need some teardrop pearls. I bought these on Etsy, I believe, a long time ago. But I will look around online and see if I can find something pretty similar that you guys could purchase. And speaking of size, my earrings are going to be just about 1 and 3 quarters inches long. Uh, from the base of the ear wire. So the wire measurements that I will be giving you is to make an earring of this size. If you want something a little bit larger, of course, you will need to increase your wire lengths and gauges a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do in making these is to shape this little lower portion out of wire here. This shape, right like that. So to do that, go ahead and pull out your 20 gauge wire. And we're going to cut a few lengths of this. We're going to need a 3 inch piece just one for each earring. So three inches, um, for those of you in metric, that's going to be about 7.8 centimeters. There we go. And again, you'll need one of these for each earring, but I'll just cut one for now. And then we're going to start in the middle of this wire, so let's go ahead and bend it right in half, making a little U shape. And take your round nose pliers. We're going to cross these wires over so that we have a little bit of like a teardrop shape at the bottom here. And then with these two tails, we're going to put some little loops in. Just wrapping it all the way around to create a little circular loop, just like that. And we're going to do that on each side. So we're going to have that sort of shape now. And then the last thing we're going to do is take these ends and curl them in towards the center fairly tightly so that we have something like that. And now for this other side I want it to be cut flat and flush like the other one so I'm just going to use my flush cutters to snip it off there and get a neater looking end. And then I'll do the exact same thing that I did on the other side. Now of course this doesn't look symmetrical yet so I'm going to refine this a little bit. And we want these upper swirls to have a little more distance between the lower swirls. So I'm going to do that by moving the lower swirls in a little bit towards that lower teardrop shape. So that I have a little more space up there. So we'll do that same thing on this side. There we go. So we've refined our shape a bit. And symmetry is fairly important with this design. So the first time you make this, you might want to actually just do one and have it be a pendant. 
um, which you can very easily do by just instead of putting the ear wire on when you're done, adding a little bail or a jump ring so you can thread it onto a necklace. That way you can kind of master the design without having to stress so much about getting two symmetrical earrings that match each other the first time. But that's what we have for now. You want something roughly like that. And just to help you with spacing, what we're going to wind up doing is placing some of those 3 millimeter pearls right in this space here. So you want to make sure that these two wires are at least 3 millimeters apart from each other. So that will help you a little bit with just knowing how to space your little curls and swirls here. But for now let's set this piece aside and we're going to pull out our 22 gauge wire. So for your 22 gauge wire we're going to cut a slightly shorter piece. We're going to do 1 and 3 quarters inch long. And again for those of you in metric that's about 4.6 centimeters. And you'll need one of those lengths for each earring. But we'll just do one for now. Now this one we're also going to start in the center of the wire. But instead of a little teardrop, we're going to put a sharp crimp in. So to do that, I'm just going to find the middle by bending them up so the ends are flush. And then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers, or my Zuron tweezer nose as the case is here, and I'm going to pinch that on down very carefully until the wires are touching each other like that. There we go. I'm going to separate them back out using my thumbnail here and kind of spread that V-shape open. You might need to use your round nose pliers a little bit to help you spread it open because we do want to get a pleasing looking V-shape. There we go, so you should have something like that now. And what we're going to do with this little piece is place it just like this on top of the one we already made. But the tricky thing is, in order to secure it, we want these two ends to, instead of just laying it right on top here, we want the ends to go under there and then pop back up through that loop right there. And we're going to do that on both sides. But first, we need to thread some pearls on. So go ahead and pull out whatever bead you're using in the 3 millimeter size. Again, I'm using Swarovski pearls in the color white. So I'm going to pull out two of those. And we're just going to thread one on each end of our 22 gauge wire V shape here. So one there and one there. And like I said before, we're going to have them sit in that space right there, just like that. Okay? So this is probably the trickiest part of the design, so bear with me, don't get too frustrated. What we need to do, as I said before, is bend these ends down, and then bring them back up through this little loop here. So to do that, I'm going to hold things in place with my left hand fingers, kind of roughly where I want it. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. And I'm going to use my tweezer nose pliers to bend this end up and around and feed it through this space right here. There we go. I'm just kind of working it up through there. Doesn't matter if it gets a little bit wonky looking right now, we can fix that. Okay, and let's do the same thing on the other side now. So again, taking it back behind first, and then bending this up and through. That little space right there. There we go, and it looks a little rough, of course, so we're going to work on that. Just work on feeding these up and straightening the wire a bit. So the right side is looking better. Let's look at the left side here. I think we want to tug on that a little more. And we want this wire to be running straight along here. So again, you can use your tweezer nose pliers or your chain nose pliers to fix that. So you should have something looking like this. And I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking because it looks like this little loop here 
is sitting a smidge higher than this one. So to fix that, I'm going to rotate it down just a little bit. Try and keep things symmetrical. And then I would also like this little V-shape to be sitting a bit higher within the teardrop. So I'm just going to push it up like that. And you might need to also tug on these wire ends a little bit to raise it. So that's what we have now. And to finish off these ends, we're going to create some matching little swirls that will sit right below these two swirls. So I'm going to flare them out a little bit so that this wire end runs parallel to this wire here for a little distance. So again, just bending it out so they run parallel. There we go. And I can tell we're not going to need quite this much length to make the little swirl. So I'm going to snip off maybe an eighth of an inch on each side. And then using round nose pliers, I'm going to make a very tight open spiral. And you might find that tweezer nose pliers are even better at refining that shape. And we want the top of this little spiral we're making to just touch the bottom of this loop right here. So I'm going to spiral it a little more to bring it lower so that it's about like that. So let's do that same thing on the other side. Again, starting with round nose pliers, we're going to put a very tight little open spiral in. And once I get that shape started with my round nose pliers, I find that it's easier with the really nice fine tips on these Zuron tweezer nose pliers, it's easier to finish it up with them. So that's what we have now. should have something looking like this. And you could go ahead and at this point make a second one if you're making a pair of earrings. I'm going to go ahead and press on and show you what to do next. So go ahead and pull out your 26 gauge wire. So with our 26 gauge wire, we're going to cut a few short little lengths. It doesn't really have to be exact. A little bit less than an inch or so is fine. Maybe about two centimeters for those of you in metric. I'm going to cut two of those. And then I'm going to cut a slightly longer one maybe, I don't know, an inch and a half or so. So let's take the two shorter ones first. And for these little guys, I'm just going to bend them right in half to make a U-shape. I'm just going to take one of them at a time. So here's one. And we're going to use these to secure these two shapes together. All right. So I'm going to bind it right here and right here. So for this one, I'm going to drop it right over both of these wires, right here. So that we're connecting that shape we made with the 22 gauge, we're connecting it to the shape we made with the 20 gauge. And then I'm going to cross these two ends over each other and start wrapping them around. I'm going to bring this end up through here and place a wrap right next to right next to the one we have already. Just like that. And thread that end back around to the back. I'm pulling it very tight with each pass to make sure that we're securing everything together here. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the other tail, do the same thing, bringing it up through that space there. So that we're going to have three wraps all lying right next to each other. So we'll feed that back around to the back. And again, pulling it very tightly to fasten everything on down. Okay, so you can see we have three little wraps there all right next to each other. And we can trim off the excess tails on the back here with our flush cutters. 
And don't forget to take your chain nose pliers and just smush those ends on down so that there aren't any loose pointy bits. Alright, and we're going to take our second length and do the exact same thing on the other side. Now we need to place another pearl. So I'm going to take that longer length of the 26 gauge wire that we cut earlier and go ahead and pull out your 4 millimeter pearl. And we're going to thread that 4 millimeter pearl on this length of 26 gauge wire. And this one's going to sit right here in the center. And we're going to use the ends of this 26 gauge wire to wrap it in place. So I'm just going to bend them down slightly. And we're going to wrap them through this space right here. Just go ahead and poke the end through that space there. And we're going to wrap that end on around and put two or three wraps in right there. So there's two on that side. I'm going to switch to this side now, making sure that that pearl is staying centered where I want it. Again, taking the end right through this space here. And wrapping it on around, keeping it nice and tight. And I think I'll do three wraps on each side, so let's do one more here. And one more here. There, so that's that pearl placed, and as before, we'll just snip off these ends on the back. and tighten them on down. So that is the lower part of our earring all finished. So it's going to be that lower little bit right there. So what we need to do now is create these little pearl links for the upper portion. So for that I'm going to use our 22 gauge wire again. I'm going to cut some short little lengths of this, maybe, well, let me measure it for you. Maybe inch and a quarter should be good. That'll be about 3.3 centimeters. And we're going to need two of those lengths for each earring. I'm going to get the ends flush. And just take one of those for now. We're going to put a little loop on the end. Pretty narrow, no more than an eighth of an inch inner diameter. And then I'm going to take this end off straight. So we have something like that. I'm going to just do the same thing on the other one. And now we need some more three millimeter pearls. So I'm going to pull out two more of those. We're just going to thread it on that open end. And we're going to create another little loop on this other side. So I'm going to take the wire off at an angle. Using my round nose pliers, I'm going to create an equally sized loop on this other side. And I didn't even need to cut that much wire. We could have got away with an inch, but that's all right. I will save the uh, sterling scrap to melt down. And we'll just snip off the tail there. So we've got a little pearl link component here. Is it component or component? I've heard it both ways. Anyway, we're going to do the same thing again with this other one right here. Alright, so these little guys we're going to connect with those jump rings I mentioned earlier. So I will pull them out. Now as I mentioned before, if you guys don't have jump rings in this exact size, that is not a big deal at all. I will show you how to make them, but we're going to need three of these for each earring. So if you didn't have these, what you could do is take your 22 gauge wire and your round nose pliers and go pretty pretty high on the tips because we want these to be small diameter and you would just start looping this around to create a little spiral like that. So you would spiral it on the tip of your round nose and then to create a jump ring you can just snip that coil off of your length of wire. 
you've got a little coil here, and then you would snip with your flush cutters. So you have a flush end here. You would just snip it right there to get a little jump ring. Just like that. So that's how you can make your own. Just so go ahead and twist one of those guys open. Grab one of your little pearl links on it. And then we're going to connect that to this loop right here. And twist it closed. There we go. So we've got that. We'll do the same thing with the other little pearl link that we made. Twist it open. Grab your pearl link. And hook it on the other side. So you've got your two little pearl links dangling there. And take your third jump ring. And we're going to capture the tops of those two pearl links. Just like that. Okay, so we'll twist that one shut. So we are almost done. We just need to add two more pearls onto here. Let's go ahead and do this six millimeter one first. So taking our six millimeter pearls, we're just going to need one for each earring. And I'm going to be using a head pin for this. And if you don't have head pins, I do have a video on how to make your own knotted uh, head pins. So you can check that out on my channel if you're in a bind and don't have these little guys. I do like the flat topped ones though. If you punch that item number in at Rio Grande, it'll pull this exact thing up for you. But we're just going to thread our 6mm pearl on there. We want this to hang in the center right there. Like that. So to do that, we need to make a kind of elongated wrapped loop at the top. So I'm going to go up about an eighth of an inch from the bead. Bend that off to the side. And then using my round nose pliers, I'm going to make kind of an elongated oval shape up there. And I probably don't need it to be quite that long. Something like that should suffice. And then we'll take this little tail back off to the side. Okay, so we have something like that. And this we're going to feed onto the bottom of this top jump ring that I'm holding with my pliers. So to do that, I'm just going to separate these two pearl links out a little bit so that I can get to that jump ring. And then I'm going to feed this through here. So that it pops on there. So now, I'm going to wrap off this tail here. I'm going to wrap it around the base of the head pin. And this is where having two pairs of chain nose or tweezer nose pliers comes in very handy, is for something like this, because I am stabilizing right here with this pair and then wrapping with this second pair. And that length of head pin was just enough wire for me. I'm not going to need to snip it, I don't think, at all. So I'm going to smush this end down nice and tight. So there's no loose end now. Oops, that's the back. There we go. So that's what we've got there. Last thing we need to do is add that little teardrop one on the bottom. So very similarly, we're going to take our, another little head pin and our teardrop pearl. And mine are top to bottom drilled. So I'm going to drop it on there. If you had a side to side drilled teardrop, which is what these are on this crystal pair, you would just cut a length of 26 gauge wire, thread it through the top here, and then create your wrapped loop from there. So that's a little variant for a briolette. But for this one, it is top to bottom drilled, so we're going to use our little head pin. And as before, I'm going to create a loop at the top. And then we will feed it over this bottom portion. As before, we'll wrap off this tail. So we are basically done. All you need to do now is add an ear wire of your choice. 
As I said, I like to use lever back ear wires for these. And we'll just twist this ring open. If your ear wires don't have an open ring at the bottom, you could instead twist open this jump ring here. But I can just feed it on there like that and twist it closed. There you go. Of course, if you're doing earrings, you would make a second one as identical as possible to this one. But these don't have to be earrings. You can also turn it into a pendant um, just by, instead of adding this ear wire, adding a little bail on top there instead. I do have two videos on my channel of different styles of bales that you could add on here. So I will leave a link to those. You can click the little kind of lowercase i icon in the upper right hand corner of the video. That'll expand it for you. And of course I have done several videos on my channel of how to make your own ear wires in different styles so you can check those out on my channel as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And also make sure you click that little notification bell. YouTube will not notify you when I post new videos unless you do that, so you might miss out. As always, also feel free to comment if you ran into any issues or had questions making this project, or if you just had ideas for future uh, jewelry tutorials you might like to see. I do definitely take those into account, and I do have a lot more videos planned that I will be coming out with soon. So stay tuned for those. Thanks so much for watching, and happy crafting!